Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one yet again based on one of your new suggestions. This one proving yet again why I love doing these videos because there's such a wide gamut of these bizarre, fantastical type creatures that are apparently out there in this world. This is yet another perfect example of it. And in fact, this one has to do also with an encounter. So I'll read some of that information here in just a moment. But it has to do with something that occurred back in 1948 there in Washington State. Apparently, it was a one-off encounter. There hasn't been anything else associated with it afterwards. And I'll mention this up front too. There's a lot of discrepancies associated with this cryptid encounter. I'll mention that too later on. But otherwise, I'm going to showcase it here. You can see why I wanted to talk about it uh, right, right off the bat when it comes to my channel. But it has a very interesting name. It's known as the Giant Shrimp Bremerton. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Giant Shrimp Bremerton. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that bizarre encounter here. I'll give my own thoughts and opinions and I'd love to hear what your own thoughts and opinions are too. So here's essentially what happened. So you have to go back in time to 1948, specifically there at a location called Bremerton in Washington, hence the name associated with this encounter. And it occurred to a woman by the name of Virginia Staples. This bit of information that I'm about to describe all came from a magazine, issue six of a magazine called Strange Magazine, published sometime in the 90s. This was a magazine that, as you can tell, talked about certain things happening to people or news associated with strange items throughout the U.S. or the world. They did have a specific spot there for personal encounters, and that's essentially where this sighting was done. And then if you wanted to get even more specific, it happened apparently at an apartment building that this uh, woman, this uh, Virginia Staples, was living at. And again, I'll talk about more about that encounter here in just a moment. First, let's talk about the creature. It's called the giant shrimp Bremerton because this was a creature that was described as standing about five feet tall in height. And this was actually about the same height as Virginia Staples herself. Its body and characteristics looked like that of a shrimp. If but for the fact that obviously it was different in size and overall some differences in looks. But if you could probably see them from far away, you could compare a shrimp to this creature and they would look almost the same. It had a brightish orange color. It had these very, very thin legs that were considered spidery as well. It had these antenna on top of its head and these antennas also kept moving back and forth and its body as well was just basically moving throughout the, the, the area, throughout the location that it was at. But overall, it looked just like take a shrimp and then basically zoom into it or make it larger and that's what this creature looked like there. Now, as far as the encounter, the actual one, it happened again at a rundown building in the basement laundry room specifically that this uh, woman was living at and it occurred at a large hole that was within the wall there. So interesting stuff. If this was an actual location to visit, you better believe I would have been there a great opportunity on a bucket list to go there and visit once again a spot that an actual cryptid was found at. But more discrepancies towards that again in a minute. But here's her encounter. I'm just going to read it directly from the magazine itself, and then that way you'll hear from her words directly. Here's what she said. Hi, my name is Virginia Staples, and in 1948, I lived in Bremerton, Washington. The apartment where I lived had a gigantically huge basement. There were huge holes in the walls, and the apartment house manager used to tell me that it was rumored there was a passage to the water. The huge apartment houses were so close together and they all had basement, and they were all old buildings. There was a washer and a wash tub and a clothesline, and on this particular day, I had gotten my clothes all hung up, but I kept feeling someone was staring at me or looking at me, and it was such a creepy feeling, and so I turned around and looked towards the back of the basement and froze. 
I was so scared I can still feel it. I couldn't move. In one of the huge holes in the basement, there stood this thing. Oh, it was horrible. I stand five feet tall and this creature was as tall as I was. It had a bright orange colored body and little spidery thin legs and a tent on its head that kept moving back and in and out. That thing started towards me. I backed out of the basement and got up to my apartment. I packed all of my things and moved. I was so scared. I moved over to Seattle to my cousins. I went to an aquarium to see if I could see anything that looked like what it was. And the only thing I could find that looked anything like it was, as far as this thing, was this little tiny shrimp. But it just doesn't make sense. I had horrible nightmares for years. I finally got up enough nerve a couple of years ago to go back to revisit Bremerton. But the Navy has enlarged so much and the apartment house on Denny Street has been torn down. Really, nobody would really believe this. But as God is my witness, it really happened. And then that's it. That's everything again that this woman stated in her encounter. And we're going to go ahead and talk about the discrepancies associated with it. So I'm just going to say off the uh, top of the bat that Virginia Staples, whatever she encountered, I can't tell, you know, if it's true or 100% false. I'm not here to essentially give one side to another. But there was an analysis done uh, by someone as far as that naval shipyard and then also see, you know, about the location itself. And here's what they determined. For starters, this encounter was published in that magazine and it was under a section called first person which outright declared that these were unverified accounts with encounters with strange and otherworldly beings and it even had a blurb that said none of the following extraordinary experiences have been investigated they are reproduced here as raw data to be analyzed by some and enjoyed by others so that gives you an idea again that whether this is a true account or a false account there's no indication associated with it. But when it comes to the location, there is this. There's the idea that this area, this Denny Street that she was describing, did not have an apartment complex that was taken over. In other words, there were houses there, and those houses date back to the early 30s and 40s. In fact, there was a street there, a side road called Perry Avenue and Trenton Avenue, that could have been the same location, but that was it, just the houses and then a few empty lots. Nothing in terms of any existence of an apartment house or some type of apartment buildings. And then there was uh, analysis done to try to see about the Navy, the expansion done into that area, see if maybe that swallowed up any of the apartments, but there was nothing there either. There's a Puget Sound Naval Shipyard that's somewhere there, but um, th there's nothing else indicating, no, that there was an expansion that caused other type of apartment complexes or other type of buildings to essentially be destroyed afterward. And then also there was unlikely any kind of tunnel that was found between some basement leading into some other area of water, as she described, because that would have been, I guess, sealed or something else. But this person, whoever it was that was trying to find it, could not find any indication of that too. And then lastly, they even did an analysis of finding this person, like the actual name, Virginia Staples. And while they found someone from that area that could have been her, um, they sent out a letter, but there was nothing indicating the return notice on there. And then also they had called a phone number associated with that woman, but that phone number uh, was found to have been disconnected too. So again, lots of discrepancies, not just on the location, but also the claims associated with what occurred with the naval area as well. And then also no indications of tunnels and so on, and then even names that are tied to it. So some indications do point that it's a hoax. Other indications just mean that there's missing information to come to a better conclusion, and then others that could state it's real. But otherwise, that's all the info associated with this very bizarre brief encounter with the giant shrimp, Bremerton. But if anyone has any more info, anything else I might have missed, please Post those comments below, anyone from a local area too, if you know more analysis on there, love to hear what those comments are. All right, everyone, thanks again as always, take care, bye.